arguably one of the most important uh, topics in protein function is how proteins bind to their ligand. Hi, my name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so in all of these uh, videos that we're going to do um, on this topic, the P right here uh, stands for protein. All right. L stands for ligand, and if you've never seen those terms before, protein is what you've been talking about probably since general biology. Proteins are just uh, strands of amino acids bound together and they do various biological functions. The ligand is the uh, more important concept here. Ligand is any molecule that the protein binds. Okay, so if you think of binding, okay, you think of, for example, if your hand represents the protein, and your uh, cell phone is the ligand, you know, you grab the cell phone and now that ligand or the cell phone is bound to your hand, right? Another example is whenever you go to take your exam in biochemistry, the pencil could be the ligand and your hand is again the protein. Initially, they're not touching each other, but you go and grab the pencil and now your pencil is complex to your hand, very much in the same way that a protein becomes complex to a ligand. So we have these equilibrium reactions that describe the interaction, okay? And in general, when we uh, talk about this, not all of the ligand is bound to protein. Some of it's bound and some of it's unbound. The amount that, of the protein that's unbound is given by P. So this is actually unbound protein, but some of that unbound protein can combine with the ligand to form a PL complex. So what this is, this is the protein ligand complex. If we were thinking about this in the example from before, your hand without anything, without grabbing anything, is the unbound protein. The ligand would be more like the pencil, and then if you were actually holding the pencil in your hand, that would be the protein ligand complex. All right, and these are just straight equilibrium reactions. You may not be used to thinking about them in terms of proteins, but they work the same way that you probably saw in general chemistry. And like any one of these, we can descri describe them with an equilibrium constant. But these equilibrium constants that we're going to show in this video have slightly different names that you may have never seen before. So how do you define this equilibrium constant for this reaction? Well, what you always do in equilibrium reactions when you want to write the equation you always, always read it from left to right, okay? Even though technically the reverse reaction occurs, you always read from left to right. So if you're defining the equilibrium constant, it's the product of the products divided by the product of the reactants. So it's gonna be the concentration of PL divided by the concentration of P times the concentration of L. Now, if you think about reading this from left to right, what are these two uh, components, protein and ligand, doing to make the protein complex? Well, they're associating together, just like your hand associates with the pencil so that you can write. So this is actually what we call an association constant. This is actually Ka. Now, sometimes Ka can be confusing because it, it, it's sort of the same uh, variable for um, acid dissociation constant. But in the context of protein function, generally Ka is going to refer to an association constant because when you read this from left to right, the protein is associating with the ligand to form the complex. Now, another thing that's also very important is you can actually take this reaction, this equilibrium, and reverse it. So notice this equilibrium is exactly the same thing as above, except it's a reverse reaction or reverse direction. But in any case, what you always do, and this is always the case, is you still read it from left to right. So in this case, this would be more like you're initially holding the pencil. You're writing for, you know, I took physical chemistry. We had five-hour exams. After the third hour, your hand gets pretty tired, so you put the pencil down. So initially, the pencil's in your hand, right? But then you let go of the pencil to rest your hand, so now your pencil is separated from your hand, right? So in other words, your hand dissociated from the pencil, right? So you start off with the complex, and then PL dissociates into the protein and the ligand. So this protein is unbound. This protein ligand complex is the bound form. Okay, but think about it. PL is dissociating. So this equilibrium constant, which is given by P times L divided by PL, that's the dissociation constant. So this is KD, and the D here stands for dissociation, KD. It turns out that when we're talking about protein function, the, by far the most important one of these turns out to be KD. 
Okay, and the reason we we use that is because KD um, has units of molar, and that might not really make um, a lot of sense to you. But imagine we look at these concentrations right here. That's what they are, right? Let's figure out what the units would be, assuming they're all in the same units. What are the concentrations? In? Well, molar. So this would be molar times molar divided by molar, right? And you would notice that the molars cancel to leave you with simple units of molar. Now, technically, if you've taken p-chem, you should know that this equilibrium constant, technically according to physical chemistry, is unitless. All equilibrium constants are unitless. But biochemists are sort of lazy, and they like to think about um, not ratioing any of these against their, uh, their, um, their concentrations. So this technically KD will have units of molar. If you think about what the units here should be, well, notice that um, we have P times L divided by PL here. This is the reciprocal. It's PL divided by P times L. So you can prove it to yourself by writing M divided by M divided by M, but the units here you can tell are going to be inverse molar, or another way of writing this is 1 over molar. Okay, So that's also very important. But it turns out that KD is typically what's used because we don't really like to use inverse molar very much. We would very much like molar. Now, there's another really important relationship, and I sort of just mentioned it. Notice that the expression for KD, P times L over PL, is the reciprocal of KA expression. It's PL divided by P divided by L. Because these expressions are reciprocals of each other, and actually we actually just reverse these reactions, it turns out there's another very important relationship here. It's that KD is the reciprocal of KA. So KD equals 1 over KA. And, or we can say or, KA is equal to the reciprocal of KD. And that's going to be something that's also really important because in some problems, um, you can find KD pretty easily. Like we, we're going to look at in a couple of videos how to graphically determine KD and mathematically compute it. But you don't actually do directly find KA. You can find KD first, and then you can just take the reciprocal, and that gives you the KA. If for whatever reason you know the KA, just take the reciprocal, and that gives you the KD. So that's going to be a really important relationship. And even though typically we've been using, we, we talk about reactions in this direction as shown on top, the KD is the more useful quantity, and we want to be able to understand what that is. Okay. So hopefully this video made a little bit of sense. We're going to go into some more applications of this in the next video and future videos. So make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.